What's cooking guys? In this video, we're gonna do a zoom hit transition like this. Now let's get into it. So the first thing we're gonna do is of course, we're gonna have our two clips where we actually wanna have a transition happen. For me, I have this kind of drone shot and then it's gonna like zoom into the building where the couple will be. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna go into our project and we're gonna wanna right click and we're gonna do new item and we're gonna do adjustment layer. Gonna hit okay and then i'm gonna drag my adjustment layer on top of my two clips so now depending on how long you want your actual transition to be it's totally up to you i'm going to do about 20 frames because that seems good for me and i've been playing with around with this a lot so 20 frames seems perfect so i'm gonna go to the middle of my two cuts and then i'm gonna hold shift and hit the left arrow key four times so 5 10 15 20 so that's 20 frames and then i'm gonna drag my adjustment layer there and there this is gonna be my first adjustment layer and it's going to be the zoom in. So this will be the zoom in here. So to actually do the zoom, I'm gonna go up into my effects and I'm gonna type in transform. And I'm gonna grab transform and I'm going to drag it down on top of my adjustment layer, go into my effects controls and here we have our transform. Now I'm gonna to go to the beginning of my adjustment layer by hitting the up arrow key, but if you can't do that, just make sure your track is selected and then you'll be able to use the up and down arrow keys to go on the layer. So now from the front of our adjustment layer, I'm gonna create a scale keyframe. And then I'm gonna go to the end of my adjustment layer by just hitting the down arrow key and now I'm at the end. And I'm going to increase the scale to 300%. So now what I'm gonna just quickly do is I'm gonna right click on our first keyframe. I'm gonna do ease out, right click on our second keyframe, ease in. And I'm gonna hit this little arrow next to the scale, bring that down. And then I'm gonna go over to our little window here and there's this line, I'm gonna grab that and pull it and extend it so I can see my graph. I kinda want my speed ramp to start really slow and then speed up at the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on my point right here and I'm gonna pull it all the way straight until it kinda stops and I can't pull it anymore. Just be careful on how far you pull it. Like if you pull it down, you're gonna get some weird kinda like backing into this black. So just be careful of that. Try to keep it straight. You can always just double check to go over top of it. Yeah, it looks good. So now that I have my first keyframe set how I want it, I'm going to go to my second keyframe. And sometimes when you click on your second keyframe, since it's at the very end, you can't really access the same exact point. So I just like to grab it and pull it one keyframe over, and then I can just grab the line, and then I can kind of move it to make it even a steeper ramp. So now I can just kind of check that real quick. See how it starts like kind of slow and then just goes, speeds up right at the end. You can kind of just mess with that until you kind of get the right curvature that you want. I might just do a little bit more. And then when you actually have that set, just pull it back all the way to the end. And then the last thing we're gonna do for our zoom is I'm going to just uncheck use compositions shutter and I'm gonna increase my shutter angle. This allows us to create a motion blur. You can do max motion blur, a little bit of motion blur. I always just like to jack it up to 360. And here we go. Yep, that looks pretty good. So that's our zoom part. Now let's do our hit part. So I'm gonna grab my adjustment layer and pull it on to the second clip. I'm going to just bring this down and we're just gonna make this 10 frames. I'm gonna go to the middle by hitting my down arrow key and then hit shift, right arrow key, five, 10. I'm gonna make this just 10 frames. I don't want my hit to be that long. I just want it to be kind of quick and very subtle. So I think 10 frames is perfect. And now that we have our first adjustment layer here, we're gonna go into our effects. The first thing we're gonna grab is replicate. Grab replicate and we're gonna pull it down and put on that adjustment layer. Now it kind of creates these four squares, but we actually wanna do more than uh, that. We wanna do a count of three. So just change that to three. So now we're gonna go back into our effects and we're gonna type in mirror. And I'm gonna grab mirror and I'm also gonna pull it on top of that adjustment layer. And then go back into effects controls and here we have mirror. So now that we have mirror here, we're gonna wanna duplicate this four times because we wanna get rid of all four of these vertical and horizontal lines. We want to make it blend in and kinda of look all like one image. And the only way to do that is to duplicate this mirror four times. So I'm gonna command C and I'm just gonna paste it one, that's twice, three, four times. So here we have all of our mirrors. Now we can just affect our first mirror, which will get rid of our first vertical line. And that means it's just gonna be affecting on the X axis. So it's just this number. So all we have to do is just grab it and pull it all the way until you kind of see both these lines combined. 
So we're gonna pull it all the way until they connect. And what you can also do is click on the number when you get close and then just hit the up and down arrow key and then you can do really precise movements, just one frame at a time until they perfectly connect. And that's exactly what we're looking for. And that's all we need to do for our first mirror. And we're gonna basically do the same thing to all these mirrors until we get rid of all these lines. But for the second mirror, we're gonna adjust it on the 90 degree angle. So hit 90, and now we're gonna get rid of our bottom horizontal line. And that's gonna be the Y axis. So we're gonna kind of pull this down and do the same thing until those lines meet. I'm gonna click on it again. Up and down arrow key, down, 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 till they meet perfectly. Perfect. Two lines down, just hit enter. And now onto our third mirror. Of course, we went zero to 90. We're gonna affect it on the 180 degree mark. And there we go. Oh, and don't panic, it went to black. That's normal, we just need to affect the X axis and kind of pull it left so we can bring it all the way back and get rid of that second vertical line. Uh, click again, up, and that's perfect. There we go. And now for our fourth and final horizontal line, we're going to affect it on the 270 degree mark. And then we just have to adjust that last Y axis, pull it all the way until those lines meet just like before. And there we go. There are all of our mirrors. It kind of makes this one full image. All of our lines are gone. And that is done for that adjustment layer. Now we can kind of create the actual shake. And to do that shake, of course, we're going to pull another adjustment layer. And we're just going to shrink it all the way down until it matches up with our bottom adjustment layer here. We're going to go into effects and we're going to type in transform. Grab transform. Pull it on top of that top layer. Now we actually have to adjust that transform and scale it up to that full image, which is the 300%, which was the same ending of our first adjustment layer for our zoom. So we're gonna go into that top adjustment layer and change our scale to 300%. And there's our full image now. So what we kinda wanna do for this top adjustment layer for the shake is we wanna adjust the scale just a little. We wanna continue that zoom in, maybe like 50 frames, because we don't want the zoom to like come in and then just stop. We kinda want to kinda come in a little bit more and then go back to the normal 300%. So click on our top layer, hit the up arrow key to go to the beginning of our top adjustment layer here. And we're gonna hit a keyframe for scale. Now you just wanna go to the end of this adjustment layer by hitting the down arrow key, clicking on our top adjustment layer again. And we're just gonna add another keyframe at the end. And then we're gonna go to the middle of that top adjustment layer, which is five frames. Now we're going to just increase this to like 350, just a little bit more of a zoom, just so it kind of continues into that. So now that we have that, I'm going to just continue by right clicking on my first keyframe, doing that speed ramp again, ease out, ease in. I'm gonna right click on the middle one and just do a regular bezier, bezier, whatever. And then we're gonna come back over to our arrow just like before, grab this line, pull it down and extend it. And then we're gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna pull this line to a point, pull this down, kind of make a nice curve again and I'm gonna have to pull this in and do the same exact thing I did before. Kind of make this a little peak and then bring that back to normal just to kind of give that continuation of that speed ramp. And then here we have this. Zoom in and then it kind of does a little jump. It goes boop boop, kind of like a heartbeat. That's fine, that's exactly what we're looking for. And the last thing we're going to adjust is just the position. So again, go to the beginning of our adjustment layer and then we're gonna create a position keyframe. And then again, all the way to the end of that top adjustment layer, I'm going to create another keyframe. And then in the middle, where we have our other scale keyframe in the middle, we are going to put our last position keyframe. And now all we have to adjust is two position keyframes. One in the middle of these two keyframes, and then one right in the middle of these two keyframes. You don't have to go frame by frame. That's the magic of this kind of hit transition. You don't need to go keyframe by keyframe and make it perfect because that's the whole point of a hit is it's kind of just like a hit, it's just random. Just like I did in my one of my other videos, a shake transition. It's a very similar technique. It's just a bunch of random keyframes and it gives you kind of that shake and that hit. And that's exactly what we want. So what I'm gonna do for our middle keyframe here, I'm just gonna pull my X here, maybe to the left a little bit. Not too much, you don't wanna make it so much where it's like super noticeable, but I would just pull it a little bit and it's gonna create a keyframe here. And then I'm just gonna pull up. Let's just start by going up. So we're kinda of just going right and up and it's gonna go back to normal in the middle. And then we're gonna put another keyframe in the middle here or we're gonna go the opposite direction. We're gonna go left a little bit and then down a little bit. 
And then you'll get something like this. You'll kind of get a zoom in and a hit and a shake. And you can always go back to your other keyframes and kind of adjust them more or less so you get less of a hit or more of a hit. But for the last thing we're gonna do is we just have to do the same thing we did before, which is kind of give it that motion blur for that shake. So just uncheck the use composition shutter angle and I'm like, again, jack that up to 360. And for our final product, we get this. A nice zoom in and a little shake. I think I did kind of pull the points a little too much. I actually changed my scale to 325 in the middle just because I didn't really like the jump up to 350, but it's totally up to your own preference and how you think it looks. And I, then I just messed around with my position keyframes, at least the two in the middle, and I kind of moved them around. And then I just changed the amount of shake, like I said before. You could really pull the X and Y values for the position for those two keyframes a lot and really get a really aggressive shake, but I kind of just wanted a very subtle one. So the key to having just a very subtle one is just to move the position for both your X and Y just a little bit. And it just really creates this cool smooth transition effect. Boom, there we go, nice zoom hit. And then once you have that, so you don't have to do all this again, I would suggest going into your first adjustment layer, hitting your transform, right clicking on it and doing a save preset. I would type it in as like smooth zoom in or however you wanna name it and then okay. Same thing with your replicate and mirror because that kind of takes the most amount of time. Just highlight all your replicate and mirrors by just holding command and then clicking on all your mirrors. I think that's it. And then right clicking and then saving preset replicate and mirror. I honestly already have this preset so I'm not gonna save that. And then for the last one, do the same thing, just your transform, right click, say preset, and then just do hit, hit okay. And then whenever you need to access these again, just go into effects. And then under presets, you'll have your hit, your mirror replicate, and your smooth zoom in. And then you can just create a new adjustment layer, however your length is, and then drag and drop those. But just keep in mind that if you pull in a massive adjustment layer and then pull the smooth zoom in on it, or same thing goes for your other two adjustment layers, you make them really long or really short, and you pull these on, it'll be the whole length of your adjustment layer. So make sure you have the length of your adjustment layer set before you pull these presets on. All right guys, that's all I got for you for this video. A nice smooth zoom hit transition effect in Premiere Pro. If you like this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and as always, ring that bell so you can be kept up with all my other tutorial videos like this. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one guys. Peace. Thank you.